Yo, it's your boy, Master Aubrey, live and direct. Holla at your boy. I'm back at it again. The last video for tonight before I retire. Like I always do, I do my disclaimers in these videos. If you're not spiritually in tune with the most high and you're not in spiritually in tune with yourself, this is not a video for you. If you are religious in any type of way and you're rigid in your thinking, this is not a video for you. If you do not like profane language, meaning vulgar words, this is not a video for you. I'm making these disclaimers right now so we don't get that to interrupt my message. Topic of this video is called the righteousness of God, a spiritual currency and virtue in man's aura. I wrote a lot of notes on this. I was in meditation. The Holy Spirit broke this down to me. I'm going to break it down to you guys. Nigga man style like I always do. But I want to just go off of my notes. Because I wrote like at least four pages worth of information. So I'm going to go through the pages. Read what, what I wrote. And then I'm going to get into the rant. Alright, so. In Romans 4 verse 3. It says... For what does the scripture say? That's a question. Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. What I wrote in my notes is righteousness is equated to life. So righteousness is life. It's a life force. It's a currency. So it says to be righteous in God is to live, is to have and to live an eternal life. So the righteousness in God is to have eternal life. Self-righteousness, which is man trying to be self-righteous in and of itself, equals no life. For, it says it in scriptures, it says, For all have sin and fall short of the glory of God. No man on the face of this earth, planet earth, is righteous. Meaning that we all sin. We were born into sin. We were born into spiritual bondage. Right? The only way we're getting out of this bondage is by accepting the Christ within, which is who? Jesus Christ. You understand? Accepting the truth for what it is. Accepting your situation. Right? Self-works have no life in them because it praises idols and make idols out of people, places, and things. And it does not serve the true and living God. So when people do stuff by self-works, you do rituals, you give praise and worship to other deities, you praise and worship other people instead of praising the true and living God. Those are self-works. If you do something and don't give God thanks and praise for the thing that you accomplished, even though it was you that was doing the physical labor, you do not acknowledge the spirit within, you do not acknowledge the inner man. Then it is self-works and that self-righteousness and it does not have life in them. Just like the idols that you have, the statues that you have in your house, they have no life in them. They can't speak, they cannot hear, they cannot see. Okay? Um, what else I said in my notes? I said to seek righteousness is to seek life. To live righteously is to live by truth and the word. All right? Now, I said... To have faith in things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The things that are not seen are the things that dwell in the realm of the spirit, the unseen world. Dreams reflect on things hoped for, i.e. God's promise to Abraham about being the father of many nations. God had given Abraham a vision and he told him in the vision that he will be the father of many nations. And you see, when Abraham believed on God's word within the vision or dream, it counted as righteousness before the sight of the Lord because Abraham moved on an act of faith by trusting on his vision that the Lord has given him and following those instructions given within the dream state. You guys and ladies have dreams every night, whether you are aware of them or not. God seals his instructions within the dream. God speaks to you through symbols, images, people, places, and things that interact with you in the dream. This is how God speaks to us. 
because he says to worship him in what? Spirit and truth. And if God is a spirit, when you go to sleep at night, you are in your spirit form. That means you could converse with the Most High, have one-to-one -one conversation with the Most High. When the Most High explains to you what's going on in your life, he's planting the seeds of what he wants you to do. Is either you recognize those things in order for you to inherit the kingdom. When you recognize those things within the dream, you understand the vision. You understand what God is asking of you to do. The instructions planted in the dream. And you believe wholeheartedly in that, then that's counted as righteousness because that's an act of faith. Okay, so when Abraham believed on God's word, that he would be the father of many nations and that he was supposed to get with Sarah and out of his loins will be he will birth many nations. And Abraham believed, even though he was a 90 year old man. And he's like, I can't give birth. Most people will be like, oh, I'm 90, man. My shit is dried up. But Abraham believed on God. And when he believed that God could do the impossible because he was a 90-year-old man. You feel what I'm saying? He believed that God could do all things. That counted as an act of faith, which is righteousness in the sight of God. Okay? Now my next notes. Spirit is life, and the Spirit gives us life in the dream when He seals His instruction in our hearts through symbols and images shown to us in the dream state or in meditation, i.e. alpha state. When you guys are meditating in alpha state, God is sealing His instructions in your heart through images and symbols. When you are meditating, you're seeing these images flashing across your subconscious that's God showing you things. He's speaking to you through images and symbols. He doesn't have to speak with words. Because you have different voices. You have ancestors speaking to you. You have spirit guides speaking to you. You have different beings speaking to you. But the voice of the Most High is unique. And when you start to develop a relationship, a personal relationship with God, you will hear the voice of the Most High. Because he says it in the scripture, he said... My sheep would know the name. He, my sheep would know the sound of my voice. My sheep know the sound of my voice. I've heard the voice of the Most High. I acted on faith plenty of times. See, my house is a representation of mm -hmm. acting on faith. You see, because I acted on faith when I asked God, what can I do to save up? What can I do? To get a house, Spirit said, save $4,000, right? So when the Spirit says save $4,000, that was God in a similar sense, like how God told Abraham, he said, look, I make you the father of many nations. So put me in the shoes of Abraham. I'm going to God and I'm saying to God in the dream, God, how do I live on my own? How do I survive on my own? What do I need to do? What are the things? God said, simple instructions, $4,000. He ain't say go play lottery. He ain't say do all this extra shit. He ain't say go borrow money from somebody. He says, save. I took that instructions in my heart and I followed through, meaning I got a job. If not, I was already at a job. I started saving. I started saving the amount that he asked for. He, I didn't save any more and I didn't save any less. The exact amount. God is always dealing with exact. When I got to the 4,000 mark, God did the rest because that was an act of faith. It counted as righteousness in the sight of God. Because I follow the instructions of what the Most High placed in my heart. Because I wanted a place to stay other than the place I was staying at. God opened the door. It played out perfectly. Everything moved smoothly because God made the crooked path straight. 
I've told this story so many times in previous of my videos about how I obtained my house, but I'm showing you how I obtained my house through the currency of righteous living. How I obtained what I wanted through the act of seeking the kingdom first and his righteousness. All right. No, now let's continue. It says, when we receive this in our subconscious mind as being true, then we have received the good news, the gospel, or the word. All right? So when you receive the instructions of the Most High in your subconscious mind, through the dream state or in meditation, in an aha moment, you have received the good news, you have received the gospel, and you received the word. When we allow the seed or the word of God to grow in our lives, then that is the fruits of the spirit, which is the physical manifestation or the end result of things hoped for, evidence of the thing not seen, which is what? Faith. Faith in its final transformation. Faith in its final phase. Is the fruits of the spirit. Physical manifestation. So when you move on the act of faith. You move on faith. Because faith is the size of a grain of a mustard seed. And Jesus Christ said. If you was to have faith. The size of a grain of a mustard seed. You can move mountains. This should be applied to anything you do. Believe in the impossible. That the impossible could be possible. In Abraham's case, bringing it back to Abraham, Abraham was an old guy. He, didn't, he felt he couldn't reproduce at that point. You feel what I'm saying? Because after a certain age, guys, we can't reproduce anymore. You understand? Women at a certain age, they go through menopause. They can't re reproduce anymore. You understand? So let's keep it 100. The physical body is designed to dis be destroyed. The physical body is designed to go through different metamorphoses. The physical body is designed to do a certain thing within a certain time period. So in Abraham's logical mind, he thought that it could not be done. But he moved beyond logic. See, the things of righteousness, these positive virtues, these spiritual currencies, go beyond human logic. He knows how old he is. He knows that that's not logically possible. But he's putting faith and trust in a higher power greater than himself to say it is all possible through Christ. Mm -hmm. It is all possible through what God has shown me in his dream. If he said he's going to make me the father of many nations... To a logical person, you're like, nigga, you pulling my leg. You're pulling my leg. But in this situation, God is not pulling your leg. God is telling you what he's trying to do through you, the vessel. Now you either accept that or you can reject that. If you accept that, it counts as righteousness. It counts as a currency. That currency goes into your spiritual bank account. That spiritual bank account is what adds to your kingdom when you leave from this world. I.e. through the physical death. When you become a spiritual being once more. Because you're already a spirit in a physical body. When you leave the house. Which is the physical body. Your spirit leaves that physical body. You have to go into another body. And that body is called your astral body. And you'll be in the astral world. Now you're living a different life than you lived in the physical world. If you did not prepare yourself. Right? Through this life. To prepare for the next life. Then you won't have shit in the next life. Because you have not saved your money. Meaning your spiritual currency. Because we're dealing with physical currency. Our physical currency is coins, bitcoins, the US dollar, money. That's the worldly currency of this world. Third dimension. But what is the spiritual currency of the spiritual world? 
your virtues, faith, righteousness, love, compassion, forgiveness. These are positive virtues of the spirit, hope, joy, happiness. You understand? These are virtues. These are spiritual currencies that you use in the spiritual world. The enemy knows this. That's why it's called selling your soul. When you sell out for worldly things. Because you're exchanging a spiritual currency for a physical one. And what did Christ say in his word? He said, if you try to save your life, you will lose it anyway. But if you die for my sake, you will gain everlasting life. Now, what does this mean? Metaphysically, let me break it down, nigga man style. When you move on the act of faith, you don't sell out for physical things. You keep your spiritual currency because you know that this physical life is just short-lived for how long you live, right? But when you leave this world, you know you have amounted and you have saved up. It's just like if you work at a job for so many years and now you're ready. It's like 30 something years you've been at this job. Now you're ready to leave. You have built up a currency. You have built up retirement funds. You have built up with your 401k, your pension, all of those things. You feel what I'm saying? Now... You have money to live off of for the rest of your life or how long you live. You'll be receiving a check for the rest of your life after the job you left. But if you haven't built your 401k, you haven't built your, your, your saving funds or your life insurance, what's going to happen when you leave that job? You want to be able to survive. So that's the same thing that happens when you go to the spiritual world. If you don't build up these positive virtues, you don't build up righteousness, you do not build up love, joy, forgiveness. When you go to the kingdom of God, which is that spiritual world, the higher level realms, you have not built up a kingdom there. So therefore, you do not belong there. You belong in the lower realms, the lower planes, the hell realms. I'm giving you a metaphysical, logical, down-to-earth understanding of how the spiritual world runs. I've went to those higher level realms. But guess what? I can't be there. Why? Because I have not built up enough currency there. I could probably be there as a field trip. And I could come back and tell you that, yeah, I had a good time being in the Hamptons. I had a good time being in Hollywood. But I cannot live in Hollywood. Why? Because I have not built currency there. So the same thing applies to the spiritual world. If you don't have spiritual currency and you have not built up spiritual currency in the spirit world, you can't go to heaven because heaven relies on a different currency than the physical earth. You have built up your whole mind all this time to rely on physical things. You have not built up your mind to rely on spirit. So bringing it back to Abraham, where Abraham believed on God that he will be the father of many nations, he had built up spiritual currency. Therefore, when he left this world, he could leave in peace because he knows he has a kingdom in God's kingdom. Because he said, in my house, my father has many mansions. Now, Abraham has a mansion within mansions. You get what I'm trying to say? You've got to understand this shit. I'm trying to get you guys to understand this. Not looking at it as salvation from an external source, but understanding this from a metaphysical point of view. All right? Listen. So, um, it says, this is how we inherit the kingdom of God on earth. Right? Job 29 verse 14. I put on righteousness and it clothed me. And my justice was like a robe and a turban. Okay. Let me break it down. Righteousness used in this context. Context. Sorry. So I said righteousness used in this context. Ascribed to the aura of man. Your auric field. 
So righteousness is a garment that we put over our auric field. Because your aura radiates who you are. Your aura tells the world who you are. It tells of your personality. It tells of who you are. It talks about past life, present day experiences, your all your experiences, your mental, your mental, I say your mental. So your mental, your emotional, physical, and all the above. It's in your aura. Your aura is a is an X shape type of thing around you. You understand? It's like a force field. When you add righteousness to your character, it is like a protection. It's like a force field. It brings light. It is a currency. It is a virtue. You add it onto you because it says it right here. Joe 29 verse 14. I put on righteousness, which is what? Life. It clothes me. My justice was like a robe and a turban. Justice is a virtue. When you do things that are justified by God, not by self-justice, I'm seeking justice outside the realm of God. I'm seeking to justify myself. No, you're justified by God. And if you're justified by God, it, it's like a garment that you wear on your inner man. And when you wear this garment on your inner man, you will receive the true justice for you Mayat niggas that like to talk about balance. When you receive the true justice from God, then justice will be served. The true justice. Black people are looking for justice in the system that is unjustified. Period. It's built off of lies. You will not get justice in this system. I'm just going to keep it real with y'all. I know that's a, a, a hard pill for you motherfuckers to swallow. You need to find justice in God. For God said, vengeance is mine. When you take it upon yourself to do what you want to do, this is why we're not seeking the justice that we need to seek. Or the justice that we need to have. Why? Because every time that we have any injustices done to us as black people, we go out there and pick, we go out there and march, we go out there and protest. That's not true justice. And you're looking like a clown. You know what I'm saying? You're looking like the joke of the world. The world looks at black people as jokes, especially in America. They look at us as jokes because we don't understand this. We're lost. We don't know our identity in God. And this is why I'm bringing these type of topics to our to the forefront. I'm bringing all these topics to the forefront for you guys and ladies to comprehend, understand. Because when you understand this internally, you will become righteousness. You will live righteously. You will become justice. You will be justified. And God will justify you. Because this will be a part of who you are. You got to make this a part of who you are. You cannot romanticize these things. You understand? So it says righteousness using its contents ascribed to the aura of man. Righteousness is a positive virtue, a spiritual currency inherited by God by first seeking the kingdom of God in his righteousness. Right? It says, when righteousness is added onto man, he wears this currency of virtue as a garment. It adds value to his soul development as a spiritual being. Righteousness is, is a, let me say that again. Righteousness is an unseen force, but it can be felt by others and it can manifest itself through the actions of others by the will of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. The body of man Conducting the act of righteousness is only a conduit, a vessel for the greater power that is, which is the spirit within or the inner man. The inner man radiates this light. Let me say that again. The inner man radiates this glory or Shekinah within reflecting the glory of God. That's why they say the God be the glory. When you glorify and praise God. On the inside of man is the inner man. When you glorify the true and living God that lives on the inside of man, 
you radiate light. You radiate from your aura. Because you're given its proper respect. Not to the ego, the outer shell. But to the inner man, the force behind the act. So you got to look at the unseen. Don't look at a physical man doing an act. Don't look at Jesus Christ coming down to earth and doing an act. And saying, oh, that man thinks he's God. Jesus Christ said, look, I do nothing of my own will. But the will of the Father, yet I do. He was saying, look, this is the flesh. But the being within is the true and living God. Me speaking to you, brothers and sisters, I'm just a messenger. The vessel is a messenger. The content of my message is coming from the truth and living God. The scriptures that I'm quoting is coming from the true and living God. You get what I'm trying to say? I do not take credit for this video. I don't care if you don't like this video. Why? Because I'm just the vessel putting the message out that's coming from the inside force, which is the inner man. I need you guys and ladies to understand that. So bringing it back to that video where I talk about tithes and offerings, and I said that when you rob from the storehouse of God, when you do self-works and don't give God his thanks, you're robbing. You rob God of his righteousness when you become self-righteous. You rob God of his glory when you are looking to get praise and validation from this fucking place. I'm just keeping it real. I know this shit that you niggas don't want to hear. But this is why you are lacking in your spiritual development as black people. We are very spiritual beings. I would give us that. But you see, we're so hardened of ego. We're so hardened of hearts that we cannot perceive the true reality. Because we are convinced in ourselves that our reality is the ultimate reality. And there's no other reality outside of our reality. And I told you guys in my other video that perception. Anybody can have a perception. My perception is different from the next man's perception, but that does not mean it is reality. It's just how I am perceiving the reality and how he or she is perceiving the reality. But reality is reality, and if you can accept reality for what it is, then you cannot be set free from this reality. Just keeping it real with y'all. And there's certain rules and protocols and laws you guys got to understand. Righteousness is a virtue. Righteousness is a currency. Righteousness is something that you are building up in your character. Your soul has value. You build value to your soul. That's why it's called selling your soul. That's where you get the counter from. Why you think the enemy is fighting for your soul? Because it has currency. It is value. And this is why... Celebrities and famous people sell out. They get the whole world, but they lose their soul. You feel what I'm saying? I don't need things of this world. I understand the currency. I understand my soul currency. I understand the value in my soul. That's why I won't sell out trying to get a like. I won't try to sell out to try to make you niggas happy. I'm just keeping it real. I'm not selling out for family neither. I'm keeping it real. Because I understand my soul value. And the value in the message is more than selling out for thousands and billions of dollars. You can't take that shit with you. You feel what I'm saying? But if you build these positive virtues, these currencies in you, in your character... You first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added onto you. When you leave this world, you're going to leave with your soul and your spirit. Because those are the things that leave the physical body. Guess what? If you built up a currency in your character, you stuck to your truth. You stuck to your guns. 
You got chastised by the world. Yeah, the world hated you, but you stand on your principles. Men, you niggas don't have no goddamn principles. Y'all selling out for the pussy. We all are guilty of that. Myself at times too. But you have to stand on principles. Because if you don't, when you leave this world, what do you have to stand on? This is why there's a heaven or hell. And not from a biblical perspective, but from a metaphysical perspective. Because the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness is a state of being. And if you have not built up your inner being to be on the vibration of where God is, you're going to go where darkness is because you have built up your life, all your life based on lies and not truth. So with that being said, leave your comments in the comment section below. If you have a personal question, hit me up in my DM. If you are interested in any prayer recordings that I do, send me your email in my DM and I will send you some prayer recordings that I do. You guys can listen to this every night to reprogram your mind and break generational curses. With that being said, good night, everyone. I'll see you next time.